So in this episode, I wanna look at the panel. I'm gonna show you the menus and the buttons and all these dials and the balls, what it's actually doing. And I'm not just gonna go in and show you this button does this, this button does this. I'm gonna give you some practical examples and tips. I'm actually gonna grade a shot. So you'll see it working in a real situation. Uh, I'm gonna give you my honest opinion of what I think of it. I'm gonna give you uh, my thoughts on who it's aimed at. Is it worth the money? All that sort of thing will be answered in this episode, but we're not using this panel. We're looking at this panel. This is the mini panel. Now I've already done an episode on the advanced panel. If you wanted to see that, link will be in the description, but I'm gonna focus on this. This is a much more popular panel, mainly due to its price point, of course. This is currently 1,715 pounds, which is just over $2,000. So it's a really affordable piece of kit. So why would you even want a control surface in the first place? For me, the main thing is really about speed and accuracy. This is much nicer way of controlling the interface than using a mouse or a pen when you've got these nice physical tactile controls. These are really well built as well. This is a solid bit of kit. Also, it's about sort of you get used to where all the buttons are. So you start to not have to look down so much or look at the interface. You can focus on your image. So actually get your image graded to the best quality you can because you're more focused on it. Also just physical fatigue. When you're color grading all day, it's actually quite a grueling thing to do when you're doing it day in, day out. So having a tactile control surface just allows you to be, just become a little bit less fatigued. So the physical connections on this at the back, there is a USB connection, which is how I've got it connected at the moment, but you can also connect it via ethernet and there's also power over ethernet. So you could actually have the computer that's driving this sat in a completely separate room and use the power over ethernet to connect to it. So that's a really nice feature. So we also need to set this up in the preferences. So if we go into preferences and go to our system, here's control panel, and you need to just select the DaVinci Resolve mini panel, whether you're connected USB or ethernet. So I'm on USB, and if I go to user as well, I can adjust the sensitivity of some of the trackballs and things like that. But down here, I can adjust the display settings. So the LCD brightness, I've lifted that to seven. That was actually set to three by default, which is a little bit low. And the key backlighting was set to, I think it was set to zero. It was, it was seemed very low. So I've upped that to 57, it goes up to 99. Uh, I found 99 was a little bit hard when you actually select a button, it lights up even further and it was just a little bit distracting in the grading suite. So I've just knocked that back to about 57. So this is fairly easy to get on location as well. It weighs a little bit, but you could easily get that on location. And if you were in an environment where it was getting a bit dusty and you want to clean these, it's really easy to do. Let me just show you this quickly. I'm gonna take that off, that's just magnetic, so that comes off. Then there's a little holder here, that comes off. And then you literally, so I'll get that trackball out like that. Give it a wipe with a microfiber cloth or something like that and just stick it back together again. It's really straightforward. So keep your control panel nice and clean. These are just magnetic and line up like that and you're good to go. So first what I'm gonna do is give you a quick tour, but I really want to show you the controls by doing a proper grade. So I'm not as quick on this as I could be. I've only been using it for a couple of days, but my muscle memory is getting quicker each day. I reckon two to three days of using this pretty intensely, you're gonna be flying around it. So uh, let's start with the bottom half. This is exactly the same as the micro panel, and you've basically got some control buttons here, so we can go between clips here. So if I go uh, previous clip, and next clip, and we can play, play twice, play four times speed, reverse, all that sort of stuff. Uh, next frame, if you hold this down, it'll go right to the end, and previous frame, and then again, hold it, and it goes right to the beginning. So that sort of thing, You've got, you can go between your nodes and all that sort of stuff here. We'll use these as we start grading. All right, then you've got your three main trackballs. So these are obviously linking to the software. So what I'm gonna do is highlight in the software what's being controlled, but we've got lift, gamma, and gain when we're in the primary mode. And if we switch into log mode here by this button, we switch to shadows, midtones, and highlights. And the obvious thing missing there is the fourth ball, which is offset. So if I come out of log, you see the button next to it is labeled offset. And what that allows me to do is control my offset using the right hand trackball. So when you're in offset mode, these two trackballs turn into color temperature and tint. So this is really useful. So if I just adjust that, that's my temperature and that's my tint. We can reset all these up here. So you can reset everything, just the RGB or the actual luminance level itself. And so I'm just gonna reset all those. I'm gonna come out of offset. This is something you need to get into the habit of doing. Once you're in offset, you need to press it again to come back into regular mode. So now we're in regular grading mode. So let's just bring that down a little bit. 
and uh, so just using these balls they're actually really nice to use but they're very very sensitive so i'm just going to adjust that the whole feel of this panel is really nice these rings here they're really smooth they just sort of free run a little bit but the balls whilst they're really smooth are a little bit sensitive so what i'm going to do is going to go to my preferences and in my user settings and control panel what i can do is adjust uh, either RGB balance or the master. So the RGB balance is the ball and the master is the ring. So I'm going to go into here and adjust my RGB balance. I don't know quite how much I've got to bring it down, but let's say about 34. I'm going to do the same with the gamma. The rings actually feel fine. Something like that. So let's see what that feels like now. See, that's better. I've got less sensitivity, so I have to move the ball a lot more to get a precise movement, which is exactly how I like to work. Okay, I'm going to reset those. And the next level above, you've got these fixed tools on here. So this is the 12 fixed tools. This is your contrast, your color boost, your saturation, all that sort of stuff. Now these are optical controlled knobs. And what's nice with these, if I go to something that's gonna show up a little bit better, let's go saturation. They just continuously turn. And then if you press it, you get a little detent and that resets the parameter that you've set. So again, really nice to use. They're really nicely spaced out. I've got quite small hands, so I don't know if it's like if you've got bigger hands, but they feel really good to me. So moving on to the top half then, you've got obviously your LCD displays in the middle. These are interactive, so depending which mode I'm in, here we've got our palette selection buttons. So at the moment I'm in my primary tools. You've got a left and right arrow here. So if you've got multiple pages, for example, in the primary, you can see two dots there. That means I've got two menus that I can flip between. If I go to curves, I've now got four that I can flip between. So these are just interactive to allow you to get deeper into your menu structure. Okay, let's go back to the primary one. In fact, let's have a look at the first one here, which is raw. This is not a raw clip. So if I go to my previous shot, this is a raw clip. Now this is active and you can see it's a Blackmagic Design raw clip. That would say Arri or Sony or whatever it is. If I go to my clip settings, that would be the default. This is with clip settings on, and now I can change color temperature at raw level. Okay, let's go back to the other shot that we're on. The home button here is just gonna tell you what version you're on, so you can say about, and just check that you're on the latest version, which is version two. This actually updates automatically with the software as it's relevant. So again, I'm not gonna go into each and every single one of these, but these are the main controls that are on the interface. So it's every single parameter you'd need for the, all the different palettes on there. On this side, we've got these quick select buttons. So this is things like adding serials, parallel nodes, copy and paste, stills, things like that. So we'll look at that as we start the grade. And you've also got these buttons at the top here. So as I'm in a menu, so at the moment I'm in primaries, if I wanted to go to my offset tools, I just press offset up here. So I think the best thing to do is start a grade and let's just see what actually happens. So I wanna reset what I've done there first. So I'm gonna hit reset here and we've just got a regular shot. So I'm gonna bypass just to show you nothing's going on. So I'm using the auto color management from Resolve and I'm basically gonna build up some grades but not in my regular way. That's using a fixed no tree. I wanna really just show off the mini panel. So I'm gonna build it as we go along. So starting on my first serial, what I'm gonna do or what I usually do on my first one is work with offsets. So to do that, I need to press offset and then this control wheel here is controlling my offset tools. So I'm just gonna bring that down somewhere around about there. Okay, let's add another serial. All I've gotta do is press up here. So obviously I've got the choice of parallels and layers and all that sort of thing. And what I want to do now is work with my printer lights. So to do that, they're a primary tool. I'm gonna to take off my offset, just I'm trying to get into a habit of literally switching off offset each time I use it. It's very, I found it very easy so far. I don't know how used to that I'll get, but I find it very easy to be stuck in offset by mistake. So what I wanna do is actually go to this offset tool here, and that's gonna give me my red, green, and blue channels to, uh, to adjust using these knobs here. So I'm just gonna bring down my green channel slightly. So by using printer lights, this is bringing the whole channel down. And I'm gonna bring my blue down a little bit as well. We're just gonna get this shot a little bit warmer than it is right now. Okay, that's good. Let's add another serial. So you know how I work. When I'm thinking of a new idea, I add another serial. And let's just do a little bit more fine tuning of the balance. So I'm gonna use the ball on this track ball here. I'm gonna use my lift, just push it up. And I'm really liking how these feel now. These feel so nice. Okay, somewhere around about there. All right, so the next thing I wanna do is look at contrast. So I'm gonna add another serial node. And to do contrast, we can go straight for one of the fixed tools on here. We've got a contrast one, which is here. And this is really showing you the power of using a panel because I can use two things at once. So I've got contrast and pivot and I can work the two together. So we can get just where we want. Now that's one way of doing contrast. I wanna show you another way as well. So I'm gonna to go to here, I'm gonna press reset. And what we could do for just contrast is just use our regular uh, lift and gain. 
So this would give us nice contrast as well. But again, I'm gonna reset that because I wanna show you these tools, which I think are maybe underused, but this is Y lift, Y gamma and Y gain. So what they do is they don't affect the saturation. So when I'm using lift and gain here, I'm actually affecting saturation at the same time. And I don't want to do that. So I'm gonna bring down my lift here and I bring up my Y gain here. And again, I can do the two together so I can see what's going on as I move them simultaneously. All right, so let's see what that looks like on its own. I'm just gonna disable that node. And that's good. I should have been doing that all the time, actually. So let me just go to the previous node and just disable that and just check what's going on. It's probably a little bit too magenta. I might just bring that down a little bit. Something like that. Okay, now I want to add another node, but because I'm on node three, I'm going to press append, and that's going to put a node onto the end of my node tree. And what we want to look at now is our color temperature. So as I mentioned before, we can go to offset and then this becomes temperature and this becomes tint. So let me just show you that. But this is temperature and tint using the primaries. Now I like to do my temperature control using the HDR tool. So I'm just going to reset that. And to go to HDR tools, I need to go to this user setting here. Okay, so I press user and this opens up extended menus. So this user setting is not to put in your own user settings, it's to allow the software as it matures to add new features. So recently they've just added Dolby Vision in here, they've got the Color Warper, and they've also got the HDR tool. So if I click on here, what we've got now is access to the HDR tools. I've gotta to be careful that I'm still in offset mode. So what I wanna show you is I'm gonna come back to color temperature in a moment, but if I take off offset, when I move this trackball here, it's affecting not what's in the window, but what's on the software. So the three controls are the first three that are highlighted in the software. So at the minute this is light, this is highlight, and this one is specular. You can see the exposure changing there on the specular highlights. So you'd need to be careful that it's not following, that it's not just following these, it's following what's actually in the software. So if I go forward here, we've now got specular and global. These are still light, highlight and specular. To access the global setting, I need to press offset and this becomes global again. So that is always the same. Now, if I go back to being primary tools, this is now offset, but offset in the primary wheels. Let's go back to HDR and I want to find temperature. So temperature is in the global setting, but it's actually at the end. And now we've got temperature and tint. So these are now temperature and tint in the HDR tools and you get a very different feeling when you're using these. So something like that. So one thing to be aware of, if you want to use the HDR style temperature and tint, they don't activate on the trap balls, okay? So if I use the trap balls, if I'm in offset mode and go temperature and tint, these are still accessing the temperature and tint controls in the primaries. So let me show you. You can see that happening there. So these are not recognized as, as HDR tools on the trap ball. So you need to be in the HDR mode and then you can access temperature and tint. So it's a bit of a shame they don't remap, but as long as you're aware of it, it's not too much of a problem. And the next time I go to HDR tools, it will stay in this global setting. So it remembers the last setting you are in. However, what does work is saturation. So if I go to saturation here and move saturation in HDR mode, it's operating the HDR saturation. And if I then go to primaries, the saturation is being controlled in the primary wheels. So back to the user and go to HDR, you see that it stays my temperature and tint, but the saturation is now interactive. So it kind of works with saturation, but not temperature and tint, as long as you're aware of it. Okay, so let me set that up a little bit better because that's looking pretty messy. All I need to do is set that saturation off, just reset and that's done. Okay, so let's do another serial node. At this point, I'd start playing with my saturation, but as I've just shown you that, I'm gonna show you something else. So if you look at the sky, we've got a slightly exposed highlight going on. So I can go to my fixed tool and choose highlights and bring that down. But just to show you another way of doing that, let me reset that. I mean, that does a perfectly good job of that, but let me show you a different way. So I'm gonna reset that. And if we go into our qualifier, we've now got the chance to use the qualifier. So we've got our HSL, our RGB, we've got our luminance and our 3D qualifier. So you've got all the ones that you're used to in the software. So I'm gonna choose a luminance qualifier and I'm gonna press my highlight tool on here so I can see what is being qualified. I'm gonna select just the highlights of the sky. I'm gonna put a little bit of softness on that as always take off my highlight and now what I wanna do is bring down my gain or I could work in my high dynamic range tools and just choose that maybe in the specular or the highlights, but I'm gonna do it using my primary tool. So I'm gonna bring off that offset and this now, I'll make sure I'm in primary mode. Otherwise at the minute I'm controlling specular highlights. So I need to be in primary and just bring that down. And there you go. So I'm gonna enable and disable that. So I think the highlights tool did a better job of that, but I just wanted to show you the qualifier on the mini panel itself. 
All right, so let's add another serial, and what we can do now is maybe lift her face a little bit. So if I go to Windows here, we can now add a window. So you've got a choice of all the different shapes, including the ones that you can draw yourself. I'm gonna take a circle window, and put the window on, and then straight away, I can go in here, size, aspect, pan, tilt, all that sort of stuff. So let's just get it up near her face. And what I need to do now is track this. So we go straight to the tracker. You see how really quick and simple this is to do and track both ways. And that's done. So I can now go back to my primaries and make the adjustment I want to do. So I probably put a little bit of offset maybe in there or if not, certainly a little bit of gain. Then what we can do is go back to the window and adjust our softness. So now what I could do is grab that as a still. That could be a good reference point for the rest of the program. So to grab a still, all you need to do is press here and that's now in our stills library. So to show you some more stuff, I'm gonna move on to another shot. All right, so pressing next clip, I can just move down here and I'm gonna work on this shot. I've already done two nodes on here. So if I just bypass instead of disable, I can show you what it was before. This is a raw clip. So a bit of the heavy work has been done by Resolve Color Management already because it recognizes this is a Blackmagic Design raw file. If I wanted to access anything in there, all I've got to do is press clip settings here and I can adjust the color temperature and all that sort of stuff. So moving on from that basic balance, I'm gonna add another serial node. I'm gonna take my bypass off. I'm gonna to go to my curves in my palette select buttons. And you can see now that we've got access to all the curves. So there's four menus in here. We can go through each of those four menus using the left and right arrow keys. And if I go to my custom curves, if I wanna take out a bit of red just in the shadows, for example, I can ungang the channels here, choose just my red channel, and then I've got percentage points going up that curve. So at 20%, I'm just start pulling out a little bit of red. We can just fine tune that, okay? Now what I can also do is, you see when I'm moving this, I'm just gonna exaggerate it, but the green and blue channels are moving with it. If you actually want to totally isolate that, if I just reset that, you can go to the Luma Mix key, bring that down to zero, just so you can see what's going on. If I go to my primaries, you can see Luma Mix is now set to zero, so it was at 100. Okay, and what that allows me to do is go back to my curves and when I adjust now the red channel, the green and blue are not affected. So that's what that Luna Mix does. So if I want to compare that to one of the stills, what you need to do is press play still here. And the still that's up there at the moment is the one that's selected, but I can actually go to another still on here. So I can say next still, and this is comparing it with a shot before, which I've already graded. Now if I want to move that wipe, what you would need to use your mouse and or pen, but actually I've got the speed editor next to me. So if I just use the jog dial on here, it actually controls that wipe. So the speed editor is a really nice addition to this. What else we can do is use the reference button here to cycle through different types of wipe. So we've basically got, this is looking at whatever is active on the timeline, which is this shot here, or press it again, it's gonna show me my offline reference clip if you've got one associated to this timeline. And again, it'll just cycle through all three. So this reference button only works once you've got play still in action. Okay, let's add another node. I'm gonna add a serial and let's look at the curves in a little bit more detail. So if I go to this setting, the next one, I've now got an option to choose hue versus hue, hue versus sat. All the different types of curve are available up here. So I'm gonna go straight for hue versus sat and I'm just gonna increase that sky a little bit. So I'm gonna take the cyan option here and it's not quite cyan, so I'm, I'm trying to increase the saturation. I'm gonna exaggerate it a little bit just so you can see it. I wouldn't normally go this harsh but if I just lift that up, but we're not quite hitting the sky. So what we wanna do is move over to the input hue here and just start moving that so we actually get to the right point, to the right hue of the sky to actually increase it. So if I enable and disable that, that's not making too much difference. Let's exaggerate it a bit more. Okay, so my mistake, I can't see what's going on because I've still got the still on there. So let's take that off. Now enable, disable. Yeah, okay, that's doing a lot more than I wanted to. So I'm actually just gonna knock that back a little bit more Let's bring my cyan down a bit. That's a bit more sensible now. And I'm just gonna check my input hue again. Something like that. Okay, let's enable, enable and disable. That's looking good. So let's add another serial. And what we can do now is add some effects. If I go to effects, there's actually a few pre-built in here. So you've got glow, color compressor. Okay, I wouldn't say that's one of the most used ones, but it's there anyway. Uh, lens flares, nice film grain, all these sort of things are built in, ready to go. So if I wanted to add glow to this, just hit glow and all the tools are there ready for me to do. But I don't wanna add glow in here. So I'm gonna just reset that. What I'm gonna do is take my chromatic adaptation tool. 
I'm going to drag and drop it on. And now what happens is the effect that I've loaded on because it wasn't in the preset is now in the menu. And what I like with this is that these knobs here are actually sensitive depending on the menu that I'm working with. So for example, the illuminant type, there's only a few different options in that. So you actually have to turn this quite away to go through the different options. And I quite like that. I don't want it to be too sensitive. You might be just trying to get to where you want to be. You just want to be able to turn that knob quickly. But now when I go to adjust the Kelvins, that is behaving as I'd want it to. I want it to be a little bit more sensitive. So let's just get that right on it, round about there. And also in here, we can go to full viewer mode and that gives you a really nice mode, but I can still see the chromatic adaptation menus there. And if you want a big view, full screen, the viewer buttons here. I don't know that I need that as a button necessarily, but it's there all the same. The previous memory button here will put you back into the state you were when you first landed on that clip. So if I press this now, it's gonna put us back to where I was when I just landed. So I'm really enjoying using it. It's really well engineered. I think the buttons behave really well. The fact you can change the lighting on here and the lighting on the screens. I want to change the sensitivity of the, uh, the balls on the RGB. This is all working really well for me. So I think with a bit more practice, I'd be getting much, much quicker on this. I'd like to be able to copy and paste grades is something that I can't find on there. So you can't copy the whole grade or I certainly don't know of a way of doing it. I think that little HDR temperature tint tweak could be good. The fact they've got this user setting here so they can just keep adding new features is a really good idea. Oh, and there's the color warper as well. So they've even got the color warper in there. Other things to note as well, in the motion here, you've got the different types of noise reductions. So you can cycle through those. You do get a studio license with this as well. So if you haven't got noise reduction already, you're gonna get that with this. You've got the blur tools here, so we can go through the different types of blur. If you go to sharpen, you've now got two menus. So pretty much every tool that I use in my regular grading is here on the mini panel. So for me, the mini panel is really aimed at anyone who wants to take their color grading a bit more serious. If you're in the color page more than you used to be, you've started invoicing and you're earning a few quid from being a colorist, this is the time to start thinking about getting a control surface. And there are cheaper ones available. This is not the cheapest one, but I've owned a few of them. The third party ones, they're not the build quality that this is. And also with this, it's gonna keep evolving with the software. So with the firmware updates, we've just seen recently uh, HDR and Dolby Vision added to this. So it's gonna just keep evolving. So if I didn't have an advanced panel already, I would be very happy with a mini panel. I'd be adding a stream deck, maybe two stream decks to it just to give it a bit more functionality. Uh, I've already got a speed editor, so this would be complementing it really well. I hope this has been a good insight into the mini panel for you. Look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next episode. To show you how easy that is to do. These are just magnetic, so that comes straight off. He says, comes off pretty easily. And then there's just a little screw thread thing there that you take off, and this trackball now comes out. Uh, okay, I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna do it a bit easier than that. And then these trackballs, he says, a bit smooth, a bit. Oh, fuck's sake. Take the ball out. And then all you've got to do is try and get this trackball out, which is not so easy because it's super shiny. So I can't grip it. There, that's come out. Good Lord. <laughs>